Hi there, it's Nicole here today with an Ocean Scene Builder card created with stencils, stamps, and dies from Honey Bee Stamps. And I absolutely love their stencils. They come, most of them come in these four packs, or three or four packs, I guess, and they layer. And that is what gives you this immediate dimensional look on a flat surface. And the Ocean Scene is incredible. To start, we're gonna start with the background and going to ink up a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock with Distress Oxide inks. They give this fantastic, almost chalky, kind of a matte look and finish that is going to be fantastic for this ocean scene. I am layering peacock feathers, faded jeans, and then black soot Distress inks. And I wanna have a seamless transition from one ink color to the next for this really beautiful look. So the black is really intense right here and that's really not the look that we want. So I'm gonna keep working these inks one into another until I have a beautiful seamless transition. The key to the successful scene building with these stencils or any stencils really is making sure your background is nice and blended first. So this is the base layer of the scene, even though no additional paper is going to be adhered to the top other than the, dot, the stamped and die cut images. Next, we're gonna start with one of the Ocean Scene Builder stencils, the one with the larger or thicker rays of sunlight that are filtering in through the ocean surface. And I'm going to pounce on some of the Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide ink. And you might not be able to see a lot of it here until I lift up the stencil, and you will notice that that color has been applied to the surface and it's going to add some really awesome texture. When I lift this up, you're gonna definitely be able to see those rays, but they look really harsh, right? So probably not exactly the look we're going for, but I'm gonna go ahead and persevere and put a little white ink over the top. And I'm gonna use a white pigment ink for this. This is my favorite white pigment ink. It's the Lawn Fawn Yeti White Pigment Ink and I'm pouncing that through the thinner rays. Gives some awesome highlights to those sun rays. Next, I'm going to take the next stencil, this is another light kind of filtering look stencil, and pounce on that white pigment ink through these two areas. The smaller area on the top, the larger on the bottom. Again, it really doesn't look very fantastic at this point. I wasn't totally in love with it, so I'm gonna grab my Peacock Feathers Distress Inker and I'm gonna go over the whole thing and kind of blend out those harsh stenciled lines. Then I'm using some faded jeans. Muting what I've just put on this paper a little bit. I'm even gonna go back with the larger, thicker rays and pounce on some of that white pigment ink and see if I like this a little better. There's really no right or wrong, and what I love is being able to go over it several times until you get that exact look you want. I really like the look of those white rays coming through. Pounce on a little more ink through with this stencil as well. I just lined it up with what I had previously done. Also keep in mind that the ink is super wet at this point. It's gonna take a little bit for the ink to dry, and once it dries, it does absorb into the paper a little bit, and it's just gonna soften just a tiny bit. I'm gonna go ahead while I have all my stencils out. The final stencil in the Ocean Scene Builder Collection has seaweed and coral and water bubbles and rocks. And I want it to kind of appear that these elements are off into the background underneath the water. I am applying them with black soot or faded jeans distress ink, and they look really harsh again when you first apply those to the scene. I actually let this whole background sit overnight and came back to it the next day. I had done it late in the day one day, um, and came back to it the next morning and was, I liked it already, but I was astounded at how much I loved it after the ink had completely air dried. Um, I think you could maybe get the same look by hitting it with a heat tool and it will 
um, dry it even faster because all of those water bubbles are very muted once they're completely dry. Next, I'm going to take the Mermaid and Fish from the Under the Sea stamp set from Honeybee Stamps. Their latest Under the Sea release has so many mermaids and ocean critters and fantastic greetings with um, fun, punny kind of um, sentiments. Just really, really awesome. The mermaids are incredible. They're beautiful, very fun to color not super teeny tiny which i kind of like um there's a lot to these images and tons of supporting images if you like creating scenery type cards like i do these are just really fun and a great addition to your crafty stash i'm going to color my mermaid skin first and then i'm going to move on to her mermaid tail any colors i'm using are shown across the bottom of the screen um for easy reference i love playing around with different color combinations i love being able to really um play around with the mermaids their hair is fun to color in wild crazy colors um, the fishtails are fun everything about this i love creating ocean scene type cards. I really don't know why. Maybe I, because I live in a landlocked state, I uh, secretly desire <laughs> living on the ocean or something. I just really love it. I gravitate towards them. I think it's fun to try to think of new ways to create ocean scene cards. And I'm really excited to use these ocean scene builders and try even more ocean scene type uh, or create more ocean scene type of cards with the this stencil set and these stamps. The possibilities are just endless. So her hair I'm coloring in blues. Her mermaid tail is more aquas and her hair I'm doing in blues. I kind of gravitate towards the blues and the aquas. Um, probably kind of again with that ocean or sea or under the water type of feel and theme. And I really love how the blues look in her hair. For her little conch shell that she's holding here, I'm using some yellow red colors. And uh, kind of a yellowish orange is what I call it. These are the yellow reds, but I really think they're kind of a yellow um, or an or yellow orangey kind of color. This will be a nice contrast against all of the blues of the ocean. For her top, I started a little too light with some red colors, ended up going a little bit darker, so I'm not including the two lighter colors I used. I'm gonna stick with the R32 and 37. This is a nice peachy pink top. It's really not a fuchsia pink, which I go with a lot, um, and it's not a red. It's a nice peachy pink kind of color, and I like that. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and use that same color combination on one of my fish. In the photos at the beginning of the video, you might notice there's more images than what I'm coloring right here. Many times, I've mentioned this before and I, I wanna mention it again because I think it's helpful. When I'm designing a card, I do oftentimes lay out my components, the stencils, the dies, stamps, greetings, and gauge what I think I'm going to use. Sometimes it's exactly what I use and some other times I end up needing more images. What happened here is I'm coloring my mermaid and these two fish and I thought I thought it was a little on the light side, but I wanted to I didn't want to color too many images. So I'm going to color these. I'm going to die cut them with the coordinating under the sea dies. And once I do that and lay them out on my background, that's going to tell me do I need more fish? Do I need some filler near the bottom? What about water bubbles? Where's my greeting gonna go? And from there, I'm really able to decide what else I need. And I am gonna need additional images. I'm gonna need another fish, I think, and a few things to scatter along the bottom of the scene. Almost like she floated down, picked up her shell um, from this group that's down here along the bottom, and she's floating back up. 
Now I want to figure out my greeting before I go any further. I never want to forget my greeting and not leave enough space because this is a really important part of the card. What I love is that the Mermaid Song stamp set has tons of greetings that you can mix and match. All of these little things are separate and I think that's so fun. Every word here I believe is separate. So it's going to read salty kisses and mermaid wishes but there are loads of other greetings so maybe you want to do have a fantastic birthday have a fantastic day make waves um, you are a star things like that sending a sea full of love and starfish i use that on another card where i used some mermaid images here about a week or so ago there are tons of greetings in here. So you can mix and match and really say what you want to say. I use the Misty to stamp those along the top. That way, in case anything was kind of faded or light, I would be able to stamp it more than once and have this really nice, bold, black stamped greeting. While I have my Misty out, I'm going to take the Thought Bubbles, or not Thought Bubbles, the Water Bubbles, and I'm gonna stamp a couple groups of those right there with the fish. I will stamp those with some black ink. I think it would be nice to maybe use a faded jeans ink as well if you wanted it a little more muted. And then what is so fantastic is, look at this, the stencil again can be used to line up with those. And I'm going to fill in my little water bubbles with some white pigment ink. Isn't that awesome? I think that's really fun and an awesome way to fill in the color of those outline images. I would love to see how the coral and seaweed images correspond with the stamps as far as coloring those in too. Now, those bubbles that I just filled in that have the black outline, I'm going to go ahead and add additional detail to those with glossy accents and let that completely dry. And those are going to be some glossy dimensional bubbles, which is kind of fun. Time to dress up my mermaid, the fish, finish um, adding some additional images, stamp and color those, and then put it all together. The mermaid is fantastic and beautiful all on her own. But what I think is super fun is taking a white pen and adding detail. I'm using a white opaque pen and a stardust glitter pen to add detail to her. So all of these little white spots in her hair, um, almost like just a really fun look. Um, it doesn't have to be anything in particular. I'm also adding them to her fins. I'm going to add them to her mermaid tail. I even am going to add them to the fish and the starfish. Gives them all a nice little touch of detail. The stardust glitter pin traced over her fin, traced over the scales of her mermaid tail. In real life, those have a nice glittery look and it just really dresses up these images so super fun you could even go over her hair maybe with a glitter brush pin this wink of stella glitter brush pin and that would give it some glittery it'd make the whole thing glittery i think that would be awesome it's just fun to try to find different ways to dress up all of these images so there is my pretty mermaid i'm going to put some nice strong adhesive on her and go ahead and pop her in place on my card because she is the biggest figure. I want to make sure I put her in place first, attach my fish. I'll go back and add detail to those later on, but it's very similar to the mermaid. And this is really that point that I was talking about where, yes, I do need some filler near the bottom and I think I need something else kind of up near the top. I like to do embellishments in groups of three. So in this instance, I'm considering the mermaid kind of separate and I've got two fish going on and I'm going to have that visual triangle. So I've got two fish over here on the left and I'm going to have another one up high and that's going to create a nice visual triangle that evens out the design. I think the rocks I colored with some cool gray markers. 
that smaller shell, same colors that I used for the larger shell. I did pull out some yellow greens to make my third fish a little bit different in color. I'm using those and then the same aquas that I used for the mermaid tail for the rest of him. And I'm going to be hanging a couple of these fish on either side off the edge. They are going to be off the edge a little bit because it's going to help ground the scene. By not having everything just floating out in the middle, it very much helps ground everything and make it just look like a little chunk of a scene that you've maybe snapped a picture of or something like that. So here are those remaining images. At this point, my background is still A2 sized. I'm gonna trim it down so that when I put it on a white top fold card base, it's about a quarter of an inch smaller and it'll have a nice white border all the way around. I'm adding all of these small elements with some Zotz Bling glue dots and I apologize that it's down at the bottom of the screen and I was zoomed in a little too tight so you can't see me adhering those but it literally is just attaching the rocks, the starfish, and that shell down near the bottom. I'm going to grab my paper trimmer and this is where I'm going to trim this down. An eighth of an inch off each side which this is where grounding those two fish images that I was talking about comes into place. Just a tiny bit off each. And I'll go ahead and do the quarter of an inch just off the top. I don't want to take any off the bottom here. So here is my background. I'm going to place some nice strong adhesive on a white top fold card base. Pop my scene right there in the center with a nice white border all the way around. And this is where I will finish with my white opaque pen again, um, add some detail to the starfish, the little suckers there on the starfish. I will add detail to all of the fish with the, the stardust glitter pen and a white opaque pen. Add some little dots here and there and that way the fish totally match my mermaid. Thanks for joining me today for this Ocean Scene Builder card featuring honeybee stamps, dyes, and stencils. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring honeybee stamps that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.